you. But uh, welcome to uh, Comp 621 uh, Web Security. Uh, oops, excuse me. Oh, uh, where are we? There we are, okay. Thought for the day. Okay, I'm uh, Ken Williams. I'm the instructor for Comp uh, 621. Uh, I, uh, I've been around here for a while. I'm a part-time associate adjunct professor or something. I'm not, like, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what my title is, but uh, yeah, I'm one of those things. Uh, so uh, yes, I've been here since 92. You can figure it out. And as of uh, January uh, 2021, I have been programming for 50 years. That's a heck of a long time. Uh, now, I might point out that while I've been kicking around with computers for a long time, I'm not a web developer. I have written a few web-based applications here and there. Can't hardly avoid it. Uh, but web development has not been my major area of interest. And so you might ask, why are you teaching web security? Well, because I was asked to. So, uh, yes, in fact, if you are a uh, web developer, particularly if you're a professional web developer, uh, contact me, send me some emails sometime. We've got to talk. Uh, okay, uh, there's a syllabus for this class and I'm going to review the key points in just a few minutes. Uh, the syllabus is out there on Blackboard under syllabus where you'd expect the syllabus to be. Uh, and why are you going out to Blackboard? You can uh, take a look at my bio video. Uh, yes, watch out folks. I attended a couple teaching workshops and you always have to be careful when your instructor has been attending teaching workshops that all sorts of strange things are gonna come into class. Uh, and this is one of them. So they told me I should create a, a video of my, so I did. You can go out and look at it. Uh, Okay, uh, we're not, I, I'm not in an office. In fact, I'm here at my own home. Uh, so there's no regular schedule of physical office hours. And I don't have any online office hours scheduled. I'd intended to do this on demand. That is, if you wanted to discuss something, well, email me or text me and tell me you want to meet and uh, we'll start a Zoom meeting. Uh, now, generally, if we're going to meet a specific time to talk about something on Zoom, I'll invite everybody in the class. I'll send out an email to everyone in the class and everybody can participate. Uh, but uh, uh, otherwise, it's not going to happen. Now, is this a good way to run things? Uh, I'm going to ask that question. So now we're going to do some Zoom polling. So you should get a poll up on uh, Zoom right now and you can click what you think. Should we have scheduled Zoom meetings? Uh, should we have it on demand as I propose? Or don't you really care? Uh, so please click promptly and we'll see what the uh, students in the class think and uh, we'll try to make do with whatever makes the most people happy. Okay, uh, there's about five of you who haven't clicked yet. Let's get those clickers clicking. All right, hey, very good. Uh, I will, hopefully you, uh, can you see the results? Yes. Oh, thank you, good, okay, yeah, we great. Can see them. Uh, wonderful. It's, it's sometimes hard on my end to see what you see or don't see. But uh, as you can tell, without question, 74% of the people wanted Zoom meetings on demand, uh, not counting the 4% who didn't care. But there were five people who wanted scheduled Zoom meetings. Uh, I can schedule something if you want. Uh, tell you what, if you clicked scheduled Zoom meetings, send me an email, give me a list of times that would be good for you and we'll try to put something together and I'll let everybody know. Uh, uh, 
but if nobody's <laughs> in the past years I've done this, nobody showed up to schedule uh, Zoom meetings. So <laughs> I stopped having them. But if you're going to show up and you have things to talk about, let's do it. Okay. Uh, then continuing on, we've resolved the Zoom meeting question. Let's uh, talk about uh, other things. <laughs> All right. Uh, Blackboard, as used by every class at AT, is out there. It's blackboard.ncat.edu. And there's another website that actually isn't there yet. I thought I had started that website, but uh, that's not there. But just wait till next week and it, or maybe tomorrow, and I'll have that website running for you. The website's there. The uh, Comp 621 directory is not there, but uh, I'll work on that. I I was going to teach two classes this semester, and I found out earlier this, or the end of last week, that I'm only teaching one, and so I'll, I, and spending more time on the other class's website, well, I'll, I'll figure it out, but we'll get it working. So, uh, yes, there will be a will. And then there's my email. Email is just williams at ncat.edu. Yeah, just williams. I was here first. Okay, here's the textbook. Uh, web application security, exploitation and countermeasures for modern web applications. It's a recent book uh, put out, I think last February. Uh, now, I told the bookstore uh, months ago that this is the textbook and they know it, but if you go out to buy it, it says price not yet available. So I don't know if you can get it from the bookstore. I do know you can buy it from Amazon. I got my copy from Amazon. In fact, my copy is on my Kindle. Uh, you can buy it on a Kindle or you can buy a paperback. By the way, you don't have to have a Kindle. You can, you know, you can look at your Kindle stuff on a phone or on a desktop or something if you want to. Now, if you go to Amazon, they sell the paperback for $42. Uh, other people sell it. You know, Amazon's not just sells it themselves, they allow other people to sell it. And the other people will sell it to you for uh, about $36. I'm not sure what the difference is, but so uh, you can only get new books because it's uh, book is relatively recent. There aren't a lot of old ones out there. Uh, this book is different than the textbook uh, Dr. Yu used last year. Her book was 20 years old and it was out of print. I thought for a computer textbook, we might want to get something more recent. So this is a textbook. It's not that hard to read. Now, you want to get the textbook. Textbooks, as you well know, are expensive. I think 30 bucks is actually on the cheap side for a textbook. Uh, I remember the calculus textbook at A&T usually cost about $200. But you want the textbook, particularly for an online class, because reading these things will really help you understand the material. If you think you're going to learn all this stuff just by listening to me, Boy, are you mistaken. So you want to get yourself a book and take a look at it. Also, of course, remember, uh, Google is your friend. Go out there and uh, search for uh, material. There's lots of stuff on the web, lots of information you can find on the topics we are uh, covering this semester. That's what I've been doing for the last couple of months is uh, Googling around, looking for material. Uh, but you do want to get the textbooks. Uh, as a general rule, it doesn't apply necessarily for this class. But I remember way back when I was a student, you want to buy a used book. Used books are usually just as good as, an, as a new book. They're much cheaper. I remember getting a used book where the previous student had written the answers to the questions in the margins. And I thought that was a significant advantage to me. Uh, so you want to get it. And then if you don't think it's a keeper, try selling it at the end of the semester. Uh, I have had the opportunity to buy a book at one price and actually sell it for a little bit more and make a profit. Okay, uh, this is a graduate level class. It's a 600 level class. And so it's open to all graduate students, PhD, masters, all graduate students can take this class for credit. Undergraduate students may also take the class. The university policy is you have to be a senior with a minimum of 3.25 GPA. I'm not gonna check though. Okay, grades. This is what everybody wants to know. How do you get a grade in this class? Well, okay, we're gonna have three exams or something to replace the exams. I 
haven't yet exactly figured out how we're we'll doing this. Uh, going to another teaching workshop on Friday to uh, figure out how to do this. Uh, but there will be exams. There will also be assignments. I will be assigning my first assignment uh, later on. Uh, but there will be assignments and quizzes, and we'll do those. Uh, they account for 20% of your grade. And so 60% uh, of your grade is exams. Then there's the final for 20%. Uh, the lowest of your assignments or quiz grades will be dropped. So if we do, I don't know, uh, 10 assignments and you did really miserable in one, but you did well in the others, don't worry, uh, I'll drop the lowest. And just before you ask, no, I'm not gonna drop the lowest exam. Uh, here's the grading scale if you're an undergraduate. It's the same grading scale you said. Look how kind old Dr. Williams is. If you get anything from 87 and above, you can get an A. Actually, 85 and above, you can get an A or A minus. We go all the way down. You got to get a, a 62 or better to kind of pass the class because I think it's, well, no, actually, uh, since this is an elective for an undergraduate, you can, you could get by with a D. I do not recommend it, but you can get by with a D. If you are a graduate student, then there's no such thing as a C minus or a D of any flavor. Uh, it goes down to C and it drops to an F. Uh, and that's the university uh, policy. No C minuses or Ds for graduate students. Uh, and so same scale, I just pulled out the Fs and the Ds. Okay. Uh, there'll be a bunch of assignments. Uh, purpose of the assignment is to help teach you the material help you uh, learn by doing, because you're not gonna learn the stuff just by listening to me, you gotta do some of this stuff. So we're gonna do it and then we'd like to sometimes review the material in, in class during the lecture and see if you have questions or issues. Therefore, doing it late doesn't really teach you much. So you gotta turn it in with one day or I'll knock off 20%, two days, 25%, and after that is not. And most importantly, don't even think that I'm gonna take a pile of your homework at the end of the semester. No, no, you gotta do it right away. Now, of course, you know, if you get sick or something happens, just let me know, we'll give you extra time to do this. I, I try to be compassionate. There's no evidence of that, but I try. Uh, so uh, let me know if you have a problem, but otherwise turn it on time. Uh, now, some of the assignments are not particularly easy. Yeah. If they were easy, well, what would you learn? You got to learn by doing challenging assignments. I don't try to make them any harder than they have to be. Uh, and I try to make them uh, doable by graduate students so it doesn't take all your time because a lot of you have other classes and full-time jobs and stuff like that. So we want to make sure that you can get all this done. So, uh, but do make an effort. Now, if you're having trouble, just send me an email or text me or something. And I'll do what I can to help you figure it out. We can zoom and you can share your screen and show me all your error messages and we'll, we'll resolve it. Uh, and of course, budget your time. Good time management is important for a student. Don't wait to the last minute to do the assignment. Uh, here's the uh, uh, Americans with Disability Act statement that the university requires me to tell you. I will give you uh, a more brief statement. I promise you that I, Ken Williams, will do whatever I can if you have a disability that requires some assistance. Uh, you have to let me know, you have to let the Office of Disability Services know, but if you do that, uh, I'll do whatever I can to help you out. Uh, which brings you to point, uh, there are gonna be some pre-recorded material uh, and I don't have it captioned, in other words, just gonna to have to listen to it. If you have a hearing disability, so you can't listen to it, you have to caption it, please let me know soon and I'll look into getting these things captioned. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna skip the captioning because it's a challenge to caption them. Attendance. Okay, first, the good word on attendance, you don't have to attend. I can see everybody just starts leaving the Zoom meeting. But no, I'm not gonna, greater attendance or class participation. There's too much going on in the world. Uh, sometimes you can't show up. People have lives. So I'm not gonna grade our material. On the other hand, uh, there is material. I uh, will probably present 
during the lecture that may not be in the book or other material covering. So you're responsible for everything we cover in the class. Uh, to make life easy, I will be recording, and in fact, I'm recording right now, I'll be recording all the lectures and putting them out available through Blackboard. So if you can't show up at the uh, appointed time, not a problem, you can uh, look at the stuff on Blackboard. Uh, of course, it's kind of hard to ask me questions. On it. By the way, if you're out there with your mute on, you can unmute yourself and yell at me at any time if you want to say something. Uh, yeah, oh, speaking of attendance, there will be, of course, some exams or maybe some quizzes uh, at specified times. If you uh, don't show up because, you know, you're sick or something happened, well, let me know. We'll fi figure that out. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't show up because you slept in, uh, and I know it's a two o'clock class, but some people can sleep in. Uh, you're not going to get a good grade. Okay. Cheating. And of course, please don't cheat. Uh, we're going to follow the College of Engineering's academic integrity statement. Uh, and the basic rule is that if you cheat on a homework or an assignment or something, you, you get a zero for it. And the next time you cheat on a homework, I mean, if you, if you get cheat and you get caught and you do it again, you're some kind of idiot and you deserve to be flunked. Uh, and if you flunk on, if you cheat on an exam and then you get flunked, actually, I no longer have the authority to just flunk you. I will uh, send a report to the uh, College of Engineering's Academic Integrity Committee recommending recommending that you flunk. But you know, and it's up to them. Maybe maybe you can sweet talk them into letting you pass. I don't know. Just don't do it. And for most of the time, when I think students flunk, and this is usually for the freshmen, uh, they. They claim, well, yes, I, I was working with Fred. We were working together. Well, it's okay to work together. Just everybody should do their own work. Don't copy the other guy's work. I mean, with the freshman, I used to get, you know, two people turn things in and if you print them out, put them together, hold them up to the light. They were character for character identical. And I just don't think everybody did their own work. Okay, so enough of that. Oh, and this brings out another ethical issue for this class. This is a class on uh, web security. If you look at the book and the material we're covering in this class, in addition to teaching you how to defend against uh, attacks, you're going to learn an awful lot about how to attack a website. There's an awful lot on offensive stuff out there. Uh, whole Part two of the textbook is offense, how to attack a website. Uh, so, uh, but don't do that. You're supposed to be the good guys. Uh, so uh, don't attack, you know, yes. Particularly don't attack any of the university systems. Heavens, you know, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. The university does not take a good view of this sort of stuff. Uh, we're providing you with ample opportunity to attack things in an ethical way, not to worry. Okay. Uh, Class starts at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daylight Time, depending on which part of the semester. Uh, I'm going to try starting today. I was a little slow starting because it's the first day, waiting for people to show up. But in general, I'm going to start at 1,400 hours. And uh, if you're there, great. If you're not, well, maybe you'll want to uh, look on the website later on and see if you can follow the first part of the class that you missed. Uh, I don't want to waste your time. Please don't waste mine. Okay, what do we want to complete? Uh, these are the course goals. Uh, these are the uh, student learning outcomes for the class. Uh, well, the big one is to be able to secure a web application against the tax from a uh, uh, tax that we know about so far. It's hard to secure your website from a tax we know nothing about, but that's not really a problem because 90 some percent of all the web's attacks are known attacks, known vulnerabilities. So if you protect against all those, you're in good shape. So the first goal is to be able to uh, build a website and, or take a website and secure it. In other words, improve it so it is less vulnerable from attacks. And then we'll also work on penetration testing. That is intentionally trying to uh, break in to a web application. Now, remember, as I just said, uh, we need to be the good guys and only do this where we're supposed to. Uh, 
I can tell you, oh, 100 years or so when I was an undergraduate, uh, a couple of friends and I were very interested in computer security and we would try to break into the computer system. Uh, but we learned early on the safe way to do this is if we found anything that looked like a vulnerability, we would tell the systems people and say, hey, we think we can do this. And they would give us some test time, like at 4 a.m. in the morning to give a hack at it. They would uh, switch the old disk out, put the new disks in. Uh, this was in the era of removable disk drives. You could actually pull the disk drives out of the computer and put, put, the, uh, put a different set in. And they'd let us have that. And if we found a vulnerability, they would know how to fix it. And if we didn't, well, we tried. Uh, but we never got into trouble because we didn't attack them without telling them we were going to attack them. Uh, same thing still holds in, these, in the world today. Uh, don't attack somebody unless they know that you are trying to attack them and they agree. Okay. Uh, and then another uh, goal for the course is you want to... Uh, Look at the effectiveness of the tools that we have. Uh, learn how to use the appropriate tools available from the web. And uh, there is one student learning outcome for graduate students that is not a undergraduate outcome, and that's that you should be able to design a secure web application. Okay. Uh, so here are the topics. If you get the textbook and look at the table of contents, you'll notice, oh, gee, this looks just like the table of contents from the textbook. Uh, pretty much, yes. I uh, just took the chapter headings and put them here. That's the table of contents. So those are what we're, we're going to learn in this class. There are some background materials, things you're going to have to know. Now, hopefully you know most of this stuff, but not to worry. I'm going to have some uh, material to help uh, teach you this. This is not really the goals for the class. These are not things that the course is set out to teach you, but it's helpful to learn these things or to know these things in order to do well in this class. Uh, now, uh, this is important stuff. Uh, in the last year during the pandemic, technology has saved our ass. Uh, We've been able to work at home, or at least some of us have work at home. You've been taking classes online. Uh, we've been meeting on Zoom much more than we want to. Uh, and biotechnology has created a vaccine. And if you don't think that didn't involve a whole lot of computer time, then you don't know how the system works. So we've been, computers have saved us. You know, we had another pandemic in the 1918 Spanish flu, which didn't come from Spain. Uh, and they didn't have the technology. It was a lot tougher. A lot, a lot of people died, but we were able to save ourselves a little bit. So it's the web is critical, but it's vulnerable. And we, that's me, you, those people involved in computer security have to keep this running. Now, uh, there's a bunch of background material on this class. And uh, brings around an issue about the format of this class. Uh, the class is scheduled to be a two and a half hour online uh, live lecture. I cannot think of a worse teaching format than two and a half hours live once a week teaching. Uh, oh, I could teach in a foreign language, uh, but I don't really know any foreign languages well enough to do that. So but this is pretty miserable. I have a suggestion. I would like to break the class up and teach one and a half hours as a live lecture and then augment it with two half hour pre recorded lectures. And you can watch the pre recorded lectures during the week at whatever time you enjoy uh, and watch. Let's just watch them by the next class period. And so there would be, instead of two and a half hours once, there would be one and a half hour live lecture and then two and a half hours pre-recorded material. Does anybody want to unmute themselves and make a comment in this regard? That actually sounds great. I Matt? agree. I agree. I like that. Yeah. Anybody want to speak on behalf of two and a half hours live? Okay. 
we're going to do another uh, Zoom poll and let's see how people go. So uh, vote democratically. Uh, Oh, everybody's logged in. That's great. There's 27 people rolled, and I see there are 27 people here. Wonderful. Unless, of course, there's somebody snuck in who's not in the class. Uh, okay. Uh, still about four or five people who are asleep. Uh, I can understand that. Sometimes I put myself to sleep, but this is an effort to keep me from putting you to sleep. Well, okay. Uh, I don't know. Don't have them all, but. Uh, you can see 100% of the students would prefer that we don't do the two and a half hours live lecture. Thank goodness, because I didn't want to do the two and a half hours uh, live lecture. Oh, you see that now? Okay, anyway, yes. 100% went for the two and a half hour, or one and a half hours and two ever go. That's the mode we're gonna go in. So you can uh, change your little calendars and go from two to 3.30 every Tuesday. And then on your own time, uh, look at the pre recorded material. And I'll be putting that out on uh, Blackboard, which brings to mind another question I have. Uh, there's going to be a lot of video material, obviously, the pre recorded material. And I said I'm recording uh, these lectures and I'll put them out available on Blackboard. How do you like to watch, what do you like to watch your videos? The university uh, has something called MediaSite or suggests to me that I use MediaSite. In the past, I've always used YouTube. And so I don't know if there's any advantage one to the other. There's no real difference to me, but is there a difference to you? Anybody want to speak on behalf of one or the other? I mean, YouTube would be really nice for portability, honestly, because you can watch it on any device. I mean, I haven't used the other solution before. Has anyone? Anybody tried Media Site? Never heard of it. No, never heard of it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody's heard of it. I mean, YouTube, YouTube, which by the way is owned by Google, uh, is you know taking over the world. Uh, but let's let's be uh, let's, let's use the democratic process, and uh, we are there. With yet another poll. So. Clickety click. All right. Hey, more people are getting these. All right. We're getting, oh, uh, we got a vote from media site. Okay. Somebody's asleep, but that's all right. Uh, there are the results. One person wanted a media site, 88% of you wanted YouTube, and uh, a couple of you didn't really care. So I'm gonna take that for only 4% of the people who want media site. Sorry, we're gonna go with YouTube. Uh, on the other hand, the first, the first recorded material is out there on media site because that's where the university told me to put it. But not to worry, I don't have to follow what they say. Uh, you might notice that I retired last year or two years ago and uh, I'm just a part-timer coming back. Go ahead, fire me make my day. Uh, all right. So uh, that's the syllabus material. Any questions? Anybody have any questions about the administrative trivia? Uh, other than that, we will go on to uh, uh, first lecture to fill up our uh, two and a half hours. Nobody else anything? No comments? No obscenities? Uh, no. Okay. All right, then moving on. Uh, let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, whoops. Da, 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 da. Back to, uh, oh, there, sorry. I'm uh, trying to make Zoom work. All right, hopefully you'll see the introduction to web security. Oh, uh, whoops. Okay, now, I guess this is web security class, so it's important to understand well, what is web security? Uh, so I went out to Wikipedia, looked up web security, and this is the first sentence in the description for web security, so I copied it from Wikipedia. 
surely I'm not the first person to copy something from Wikipedia. Uh, so there it is. Uh, it's the protection of computer systems and networks from the theft of or damage to your hardware, software, electronic data, as well as the disruption or misdirection of services they provide. Ah, good. That uh, pretty cover pretty much covers uh, a lot of the material we're covering, and we'll go over some of that in more detail. Uh, but that's general computer security. This is the class in web security. Well, what is web security? So uh, I defined it. This is skip Wikipedia. I defined it myself to be the protection of web-based applications. In this course, we're going to be interested in web applications, the security of web applications. Now, web applications use the net, obviously. That's the web of web applications. But we are not going to be concerned about general network security. Uh, Dr. Xu teaches a class on uh, web security. There's a graduate and an undergraduate class. Uh, I recommend you take his class. Students tell me they like his class on web security. So uh, you can do that sometime. I don't know if he's teaching it this semester. But anyway, he's covering uh, general web security. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try to stick to web applications. Now, uh, when you start looking at web applications, you realize that a lot of the problems are caused by uh, miserable developers, software developers that uh, didn't do things as well as they should. They didn't follow good, secure software engineering techniques. Dr. Yuan is teaching Comp 727, Secure Software Engineering this semester. Uh, so if you want to learn more about secure software engineering, and I recommend that you do, because that is the source of uh, most mistakes. Uh, if you can solve that problem, the world will be much safer. Uh, take, take Dr. Yuan's class. Uh, it's an official distance learning class, meaning it is not no live lecture. You just have to listen to this stuff uh, that, or read the material that she's provided. Okay, so uh, that kind of narrows it down. We're sticking to web-based, HTTP, the HTML uh, web things. Okay, now, who's trying to hack us? Who's out there to get us? Uh, yeah, once well, about a time, it was this, you know, I thought of this uh, student uh, working alone just for fun, trying to break into things. Well, that's not really the truth. It's money. This is a criminal enterprise. Uh, Yes, you can hack the systems for fun and profit. Uh, so computer criminals are doing it, organized computer criminals. Uh, and they have several goals. They want to steal information such as credit cards or uh, personal information which they can sell uh, out there on the black web. Uh, and of course they uh, do that through many ways, uh, one of which is exploiting the vulnerabilities in web apps. Uh, sometimes the criminals also want to extort you. That's the uh, where they'll lock up your system and tell you, if you pay me, I'll unlock it. Now, you know, they usually want money in bitcoins. Uh, and whether they actually uh, unlock it or not, uh, that's a good question. Don't pay them. The best thing, of course, to do is if you actually are a victim of somebody locking up your system uh, and encrypting all your files, is to simply reload your system. And if you've got good backups, and I really, really recommend uh, for a guy who's been programming for 50 years, back up your stuff. You need to have a good backup. It's, it will save you. It saved me plenty of times. Uh, so you need to be able to, need to back up your stuff. So if something happens, and most of the time, by the way, uh, it's self-inflicted. Uh, most common cause of data loss is the oops factor. You know, right after you press that delete button, you go, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, but yeah, back up your stuff because it's not a matter of if your system will crash, it's when your system crashes. But if you keep backing up to cover for that, then if you get uh, some uh, web attack, uh, you can say, you can just tell them to screw off and uh, reload your system. Uh, of course, sometimes they're not out to let you know. Sometimes they're going to quietly attack your system. They will install uh, software in your system 
that will do whatever they want, generally referred to as a bot, uh, that your computer now uh, will do whatever the attacker wants. And that's often used in uh, larger attacks. You can have a distributed denial of service attack where thousands of computers will attack a site. Uh, and that's often done by infecting thousands of computers uh, to make sure so you have a bot network and having them. But of course, another great goal for attacking computers is to change information. Somebody wants to go out to a website and change something, they don't like it. Like, you'd like to get a better grade and you'd like to sneak into my computer and change my uh, spreadsheet with the grades on it. Yes, that would be a goal. Uh, now, when we think about trying to defend ourselves, it depends on uh, what is the level of the expertise of the attacker. And so I have this sort of ranked in order here. The uh, simplest user is the ordinary web user. That's ordinary Joe Sixpack out there, uh, surfing along the web. They should not be able to look at material that you don't want them to look at. I mean, there are a bunch of websites out there that have done nothing reasonable to protect themselves. And so every now and again, they get hit hard because somebody wanders into something and, uh, oh, look at that. And you know they thought they deleted that, but it's still there. And uh, now everybody knows it. Uh, after that becomes the more sophisticated user, the people who have knowledge about computers. Uh, that would be you, computer science graduate students. You are the... Uh, sophisticated user. And of course, I hope you are not a threat, but in fact, you are part of the solution, not part of the problem. Uh, but there are sophisticated users who understand the system and know what they can do to get that. And then of course, there's the professional thief. We talked about that earlier. They're in it for money. Uh, they are willing to spend a considerable amount of time to do this because they see a financial benefit from uh, hacking into your system. Now, insiders are a threat, uh, that an insider is somebody who works for your system or just recently worked for your system and knows a lot about it. They may know the passwords. They may know your security system very well. They may have built your security system. And so they could be a threat because they know so much about how it works and they may know the keys, the passwords. Uh, general rule for uh, HR is as soon as you fire somebody, you cut off all their computer access. And you probably ought to go around changing a whole bunch of keys uh, for things that they might have known. So immediately cut them off. After that, our corporations. Now we don't get too many instances of one corporation attacking another. Don't believe it doesn't happen. Uh, and of course, uh, they have a lot of resources and so they might put a bunch of time and effort into some skunk works working someplace that nobody knows about to attack somebody else. And then, there are governments. Uh, governments have lots of money. Uh, the US federal government has more money than any other entity, probably more money than God, but uh, they have lots of money. And so they can, they have lots of resources, lots of, uh, they can buy computers, they can do lots of stuff. Uh, and governments do attack governments. Uh, we are, you know, you've read the news, they're, People are very concerned about other countries attacking into our country's infrastructure. We just got past an election where there was a great concern that other countries would hack into our uh, network systems and change the election. Uh, so that's a very big concern. And of course, uh, recently, there was the uh, solar wind attack oh, a couple months ago uh, that uh, somebody got uh, malware into a very popular net monitoring system. And then lots of people, including many agencies of the federal government, use this net network monitoring system. And of course, it wasn't as wonderful as they thought because I guess it was, a, they think it was Russian, who knows. The, the bad guys uh, could then monitor all the traffic on the network. And of course, many of that was federal agency network. Uh, now, as far as I know, by the way, for the solar wind, it was not uh, an offensive in the sense that it didn't do things. It was a spy. It was just looking. 
and we've had spies forever. Uh, yes, I just read uh, Sun Shu's The Art of War, uh, written in 600 BC or something. Chapter 13 is all devoted to spies. So spies have been important for a long time. Uh, and that's what it was. Uh, but you don't want spies. You don't want people spying on your system. You want to defend against that. Uh, countries have been spying on other countries. We have the National Security Agency in our country. Well, I'll talk about other agencies in just a minute. There are all sorts of other agencies out there trying to defend us. And of course, they probably also have an offensive end. There have been cyber wars. Uh, the first Web War I was against uh, Estonia from the Russians. Uh, the Russians got upset uh, about the relocation of a Soviet era grave marker. I can't help but think of somebody moving a Confederate marker someplace that made somebody else upset. But anyway, yeah, that happened. And so about 13 years ago, the Russians started attacking Estonia. Now it turns out Estonia is a pretty advanced country. They have a lot of their infrastructure on the web. In other words, they, they have a good e-government system. And so when the Russians started to attack their web system, that meant attacking a lot of the government services. And they did manage to uh, disrupt the government services for a while. Now, uh, Estonia fought back. In fact, it's interesting to note, uh, Estonia is a NATO member. And uh, about one year after, in May of 2008, NATO created the Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in Estonia. It's known as K5 because uh, in this, the Estonian language, it's Kurburkarkes Kustu Kuskusk, which has five Ks in it. And I may have mispronounced that. If you can do better, please try. Uh, anyway, so cyber war has been happening. Uh, there has been indication that people have. Uh, tried to change or tried to attack the voting systems in America. Uh, so we're working real hard to stop that. Uh, we don't want uh, some other country to be able to turn off all our power systems uh, because they get upset at something. Here are the government agencies uh, that are concerned about cybersecurity. There's the National Institute of Standards and Technology. That's been around for a long time. It used to be the National Bureau of Standards. Uh, they uh, help set standards. And of course, uh, there's also the uh, International Standards Organization, ISO, uh, of which NIST is part of ISO. And they create standards that people use in the United States. And of course, uh, a lot of the web material tries to comply with standards produced by NIST. Uh, then there's the Department of Homeland Security, which is a government agency uh, created, oh, I think about a decade ago, that generally, well, maybe two decades ago, I'm getting old. Well, yeah, a while ago, but not forever, uh, that uh, tries to help uh, coordinate security. Under the Department of Homeland Security, an agency of particular interest for this class is the National Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Centers, or the NCCIC. And there are four subgroups in NCCIC. The one that's of most interest to me, or probably to you, is the uh, US CERT, or the Computer Emergency Readiness Team. Uh, they have a website and you can sign up for emails. I get emails every now and again telling me, uh-oh, watch out, uh, they're coming to get us. Uh, but they keep track of uh, threats and inform people. There's also the industrial version, so companies might want the industrial version of that. If you run a power plant, then you probably ought to be part of uh, the ICS cert. But for us normal uh, people, US cert could be of interest. And then the military has the uh, Cybercom. Uh, Cybercom is a uh, branch of the US military uh, that is devoted to trying to keep the uh, US cyber resources safe. And I believe they also have an offensive arm of Cybercom. So if at any time the United States wanted to go out and uh, do something, they could do it. By the way, there has been indications that US has done things in the past. I mean, you know, none of these governments ever fess up and say, oh yeah, we did it, ha ha. 
But uh, yeah, it sure looks like the U.S. was involved in several things. Uh, oh, for years. Back in 1982, there was an explosion in Siberia of a, a gas pipeline. Uh, thought to be one of the biggest non-nuclear explosions ever. And yeah, it turns out that there were some computer systems that uh, seemed to misbehave and caused an accident with the gas. Uh, the U.S. just might have been involved. Do not say. Okay, so there's who's doing it. Now, what are we trying to accomplish with cybersecurity? By the way, if anybody out there has a comment, thought, explicative, just yell out. Turn, turn your mood off and uh, uh, give a yell. Uh, okay, we have several. Now, the first three are mentioned in the textbook. Confidentiality, Integration, and Availability, or CIA. I added the last three, all A's. So look at it, it's like CIA4. Let me go over all of these in more detail. Okay, confidentiality. Basically, we're trying to keep the information secret. We're trying to make sure that unauthorized people cannot see your data. That uh, the web system is secure in keeping the information uh, away from others so they cannot see your confidential information or anything that you don't want them to see. In a web application, this basically means that no third party uh, knows what you're doing. So if you have a web application and you're accessing a server that you want to access, that you and that server are involved and nobody else is keeping track of what you're doing. That's confidentiality. Uh, integrity means not only they're not looking, but they can't change anything. That means they cannot damage your data. They, they can't, change your, can't change your grades uh, on the system. Uh, so nobody else can change the information. So if you have a web app and you're communicating with a server, nobody else is changing the data as it gets there. That's integrity. Availability means uh, that you can access it when you want to, that no third party, nobody else there is preventing you from accessing the server or whatever resources that you need to access. That when you want to go get them, somebody isn't out there trying to shut you down. Uh, and typically we refer to that as a denial of service attack. And we'll be talking about this in great detail later on in the semester, but a denial of service attack is an effort to break the availability so that you can't access the system. Okay, authentication. Authentication is basically uh, verifying that you are who you say you are. Uh, so you log into the system and you say, hi, I'm Ken Williams. And the system actually believes that you're Ken Williams. Uh, we've been doing that for decades, the entry, user name, and password. But it turns out, of course, that's not a really good way to do it. Uh, but it's still uh, the most popular way to identify. Uh, there are other ways. Of course, not only is authentication between a human being and a computer, but it's between one computer entity and another computer entity. Uh, we have systems now that are that are made up of many uh, computer uh, computer systems, and they uh, talk to each other and need to authenticate one to another. So that's part of the authentication system. And once you're authenticated, once the system believes that you are you, well, then there's the question of what are you allowed to do? What are you authorized to do? Uh, okay, just believes, believes that you're Ken Williams. What can Ken Williams do on this system? Do I, am I an administrator? Or can I you know, delete anything I want to, or can I only look at my stuff? That's authentication. Or no, excuse me, authentication is who I am. Authorization is what can you do? And uh, of course, different users may have different rights. You may be able to access only your material. Uh, in other words, each user of this system accesses only their the stuff that's assigned to them. Uh, some people may be able to access other things. Sometimes it changes during the during times so or occasions. Uh, you may be able to access, read anything, and it, it sometimes may change it. And locations too. Uh, at A and T. There's the student, uh, there's the banner system you may access. There's certain things you can do with banner uh, 
anywhere in the world. And then there are other things you can do with Banner only if you're on campus, only if you're coming in from a campus-based network address can you do certain activities. And that way, uh, it's trying to reduce the uh, vulnerability of the system by keeping people from anywhere in the world uh, attacking it. And then anonymity, uh, trying to keep your privacy. You don't want somebody uh, impersonating you, it's part of authentication, uh, or releasing any information about you that they don't want, uh, but you want to be private. And keeping other people from gathering information about you. Now, a lot of systems these days gather information about you. Uh, you know, there's a lot in the news these days about some of the major uh, web-based applications collecting information. And some of them do. What does Google sell? Google's an advertising company. And part of their business is selling your information. Uh, I, now, I just recently changed phones, changed phone carriers. And so just a couple of weeks ago, I got myself a new phone. And you know, as you turn it on for the first time and you're setting it up, there's this end user license agreement that goes on and on and on. And almost nobody reads the end user license agreement except old Dr. Williams reads those things. And when you read them, sometimes you find interesting things. Oh, what are you going to give? We have to give name, address, date of birth. Why do they need my date of birth? Gender, uh, other things, third party, if anything you store on your computer, hey, they claim they can use it. Anything. Here's a quote from their data collection The use of their services, including clickstream data, that is, what, where you clicked on an application. Your interactions with what web pages you visit when you do a search, what search terms you typed in, what apps you ran, what features you use, all that can legally be collected by Samsung and used as they see fit. When you turned on your phone and agreed to the service, you said, this is okay. You've agreed to it. And so you don't have, you know, you, later on, if you go, oh my gosh, they're collecting something. Well, yeah, you said they could. So this class is not going to talk much about privacy, but I just had to mention this little item having read it uh, a while ago. So remember, when you use your phone, there's no such thing as privacy. Okay. Now, uh, when you put in a security system, uh, it costs. Security co it costs. Uh, developers, it's going to, you know, if you're a software developer, you'll find that, yes, doing all this stuff, and we want to spend a whole semester learning about this. That's a bunch of time just to learn how to do this. So that's a cost you're going to expend. If you didn't have to learn about security, you could get right to writing applications and not worry about it. Uh, it. People have to buy extra hardware, extra software. Software developers to spend time. Companies hire security people. Uh, they have, uh, CISO, Chief Information Security Officers. Uh, of course, they have to pay these guys or, or gals, people to uh, keep track of security. There's a cost. But, and also I might point out that a lot of systems, encryption systems, with sufficient effort, you can uh, defeat an encryption system generally, but it may cost a lot of money. Uh, and so the cost of defeating the computer system must be greater than the value of the data it protects. And it might be noted that uh, for a lot of companies, the data that they have is that's the value of the company. For a lot of engineering design companies, uh, if you're a company that develops software, then your source code is it. If some other company steals your source code and then starts using it as their own, you're out of luck. I mean. You've lost everything you've got. So it is very important to protect your information. And therefore, you've got to spend at least a little bit of money uh, so that the bad guy, if they want to, to attack your system, it's going to cost them. In fact, it's going to cost them so much that it's not worth attacking your system. Typically, we talk about the bad guy. They often call these black hats and white hats. I'm not sure what hat I have, but uh, uh, 
there's the bad guys and the good guys. Uh, and it seems like whenever uh, the good guys have fixed all the problems, the bad guys think of something else. And that's true. There'll probably always be security threats. Although, uh, if you take the steps that we'll cover in this semester, you should be in pretty good shape. Obviously, you're in much better shape than you would be if you didn't do the didn't cover the threats. Uh, but uh, and there'll be new threats. But if you take the precautions that we will cover during the semester, your web system should be much less vulnerable than some, somebody else's. And you know, you, you don't have to run faster than the bear. You just have to run faster than the other guy. Okay, now I didn't want you to get bored out there. So I've got an assignment for you. This is not a graded assignment. This is uh, some software that we're going to use throughout the system. I want to use the WebGoat system. WebGoat comes from the OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project. Uh, they're out there, it's a great website on uh, computer security, uh, web, web application security. It's, it's the kind of stuff we're covering in this class. And they've got uh, a system called WebGoat, which is a deliberately insecure web system. Uh, and I have a whole bunch of uh, lessons that step you through uh, attacking their system. So, uh, I request that you load WebGoat on your system. Now, WebGoat should work according to the documentation. It should work on uh, Windows, Apple, and Linux. If you're uh, now, it probably doesn't work on Android or iOS. So it's going to have to be loaded on a desktop or a, or a laptop uh, system. It's uh, but it's an all Java system. It, it just uh, was Java. Uh, so load WebGoat, download it from OWASP. There are instructions on Blackboard under the assignments link. Uh, go out there. I've got uh, instructions on loading WebGoat. Uh, just download it from, oh, it's pretty simple. Download it from OWASP. Uh, just run it. There's a rather lengthy uh, Java statement, you got Java dash this, da 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 da. Uh, since we're gonna, you're gonna need that throughout the semester, uh, a wise student, instead of trying to type that sucker in every time or copy and paste it, I just put it into a script or a, a Windows, a dot bat file, and then I just call the bat file. I just click on the bat file uh, when I want to run it and it pops up. Uh, but go out there and install WebGoat. Uh, it's easy to do. Uh, once you get WebGoat installed, then go out to OWASP again, and we want to install Zap. Uh, oh, I'm trying to remember what Zap stands for. It's Z, Z application proxy or something. P is in proxy. Anyway, it's an HTTP proxy. Uh, an HTTP proxy is a program that runs on your computer and it sits between you and a server whenever you access it. So if you use your web browser and you go out to any website, uh, all the information goes first to the to Zap and then off to the server. And then anything coming back from the server goes to Zap and then to your website. So it generally looks like nothing's happening. But the cool thing about Zap is you can have it record all the traffic going to the website. Everything that goes there, everything comes back. And even more nefarious is you can stop the packets and edit them. You can change the information going across the web. This, we'll find, is really clever. And it's a really nasty thing to be able to do. You can you know, change all sorts of stuff. You know, the website's going to send something out and, uh, you, nope, you're going to change it. You'll find, a, you know, we'll get to this later on, but you'll find a lot of websites have all sorts of re restrictions. They say, oh, enter something, you know, enter a number between one and five and don't enter anything else. And uh, they have within the JavaScript of the program checking to make sure that you enter number one and five, then it goes on. Well, that's insufficient. If it's only checked on the client side, the server needs to check it again 
because somewhere in between some nasty graduate student just might be running zap and will change that value to something outside of one to five or any other thing. Now, I can tell you from experience, when you're using zap, don't try to run anything else. Uh, Zap had a habit of uh, turning off my email because everything in the email thought it would go through Zap and Zap wasn't quite handling it correctly. So uh, yeah, uh, so when you're using Zap, now that doesn't mean you have it installed, just when you have it on, just when you're actively using Zap. Uh, and you don't have to use Zap when you're using a WebGoat, it's something extra. Although some of the WebGoat assignments require you to use Zap. And uh, yes, they they carefully designed WebGoat so that Zap works with WebGoat. Oh, WebGoat turns out it makes a server on your computer. Uh, it's just a, a Java application, but it's connected to the to your uh, system, and you can then access it through a browser under localhost. It's like localhost colon eighty eighty slash WebGoat, and you get to the WebGoat system. But if you turn on Zap. Uh, then everything will go through Zap and it allows you to look at things. And some of the uh, WebGoat assignments require you to capture information going between your browser and the WebGoat server, which is located on your computer. Uh, and then you look at it or edit it as the assignment requires. So it's a pretty cool tool. Uh, so get out there and get them installed. Uh, there's no direct, you know, I'm going to grade you on this. Uh, there may be other graded assignments coming up that uh, require you to have uh, Zap and WebGoat installed. But uh, yeah, I probably should put a, I, I have a calendar of events. The uh, end of the syllabus has a schedule of uh, what we're doing this semester. Uh, I have WebGoat assignments attached to most of those. Uh, I should probably make that available to you. That would make sense, wouldn't it? I have secret WebGoat assignments attached to them. Uh, yes, so I'll do that. Um, but it's a cool system. So you want to install that. And again, OWASP is a good source of information about computer security. It's been out there for a couple of decades. Uh, now, now there is a graded assignment. Uh, some of you, some poor students out there have had me in multiple classes. I know a couple of you. Like this is the third time they've had to put up with me. Uh, so take pity on these people. But uh, yes, I want you to do the metric prefixes again. Yes, it's out there on the website. It's really simple. It's just asking you, you know, oh, you know, what metric prefix is 10 to the three? Well, it's K, K for killer. By the way, it's case sensitive because capital M is mega, little m is milla. Yeah, it's case, so you have to answer the right case. But uh, do it. Uh, also, if you go there to the metric to the link on there, and the link uh, is also in the assignment out on Blackboard. If you go out to Blackboard, the assignment is out there. Uh, there's a write up on it, and it uh, gives you this link, so you don't have to copy it from the slide. Uh, oh, by the way, yes, the slides. The slides will be out on Blackboard. I'm going to put all my slides on Blackboard so you can see them all, and. Uh, so if you missed the class, not only can you watch the video, but you can read the book. Uh, okay, now about this metric quiz, it's timed. That is, you have to do it fast. I mean, there's no use doing it slow. The answers, by the way, are all out on the website. I think, in fact, there's a link on the assignments to tell you where the answers are. So I'm giving you the questions and I'm giving you the answers. So what? Well, okay, it's timed. You have to do it in 60 seconds. It's gonna ask you 20 questions or you have to answer them in 60 seconds or an average of three seconds a question. That's not because it's important to be able to answer these things in your life within three seconds. You know, what is Yoda? Oh, it's 10 to the 24, but uh, you don't need to know that within three seconds. But if you don't, if it takes you more than three seconds to answer the question, you probably don't know it very well. So once you learn it, you'll be able to answer it really easily. This isn't hard. Besides, I'm going to take your best score. You can do it over and over and over again, as long as you like. Uh, the system tells you your score. And then once you get 100, you can go, oh, got it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm done. Uh, you can take it more. 
I will take your best score. Yeah, so if you get a 98 and you think, can I get a 100? Don't worry. We can try it again. If the next time you only get a 95, not a problem because I'm going to take your best score. So do it. It's due noon on Tuesday next week. So before class. So yeah, just before class, I'm going to go out to the system, dump the information and see what scores everybody got. It's easy. Don't worry about it. Okay. So questions, comments, obscenities. Anybody want to say something? Oh, uh, all right. I have a uh, yet another web poll. Uh, just out of curiosity, what devices are people using to watch this class? All right. Not that this is particularly important. Okay. Laptops, desktops seem to account for 89% or 88%, depending on how you count. Uh, yes, uh, they're the answer. So you can see there's a, somebody's out there on their phone. Uh, somebody's out there. A couple of people are out there with tablets. Uh, one of the reasons I ask is because, again, some of the material we're doing runs on uh, desktop laptops. You know, I don't believe uh, WebGoat will run on iOS or Android. So you may have to use, you're going to have to use a desktop someplace. It's okay if you watch this class on a tablet. In fact, no, remember, you don't even have to watch the class. Uh, you can just go out and watch the videos and you can watch those on your phone or whatever. But it may be uh, advantageous to, well, it's definitely advantageous to have a computer somewhere. And I assume being graduate computer science students, you probably have access to a computer somewhere. One would assume. Okay, any more questions about what we're doing? So we covered the basics. Uh, the um, syllabus is out sorry. on, oh, it's, 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 Addison, uh, yes. Sorry, um, just to reiterate, I noticed you mentioned the, um, the calendar. Is it only gonna be through Blackboard or are you going to have like a, another way of conveying the like calendar and dates and stuff? Because I know you said it was on the syllabus, but I, I don't currently see it. Uh, okay, on Blackboard, there's a syllabus link on the left. Click oh, on that. I, Aha, yes, there it is. And yeah. under the syllabus, the last page of the syllabus, page okay. five, it's a five page syllabus. Uh, yeah. Follow okay. the official university syllabus template uh, has the, and also the very last sentence says, I might change this if I need to. And that okay. really is true because this is the first time I've ever taught this class. This class has never been taught by anybody but Dr. Yu. Uh, she chose, for reasons we won't go into, to not teach the class this semester and asked if I would teach it for her. And that's why I'm teaching a class I've never taught before. Uh, so uh, I'm going to teach it. And uh, that's my schedule that I've made up after staring at the schedule for months. I finally wrote that this morning. Uh, so I finally pulled it together. Uh, and I reserve the right to change if we need to. Or uh, if you think we ought to change it, well, let me know. I mean, if we're running too fast and you think I'm going to lose everybody and everybody is just drowning, uh, <laughs> warn me, tell me. Uh, okay, okay. Um, well, I mean, the only thing I was going to suggest is if you were going to do some sort of like, uh, I know with not particularly this class, but I've seen some people that try to use like the Gmail um, ones that are like Google calendars where they do it and they can auto notify everybody, but. Yeah, now I gotta put that no. on you. That's a thought. Um, yeah, well, of course, right now the only real calendar items are Tuesday at two o'clock. Uh, okay. The rest of the items will be uh, on your own. Mm -hmm. There are assignments. Uh, I only have this week's assignments planned. I, I have ideas. I, uh, aha, I know it's coming up uh, for part of the class and other parts of the class, I don't know. Oh, I do have a TA for this class. I have a, a, a nice graduate student who I've worked with before, uh, who's gonna help grade things. So uh, 
yes, you, of course, you may never see him, and I'm not, I'm going to keep his privacy and not tell you who he is unless it's necessary. Uh, but uh, that person will be grading my uh, assignments. Uh, although the first one, the uh, uh, metric system, that's automatically graded. So, hey, does not do anything. Pretty easy. But there will be more. Okay. Uh, any questions? So, yeah. Uh, other things. So, basically, go out to Blackboard, look under Comp 621, look at the syllabus. Might even download it if you want. Uh, look at the assignments. There's uh, there will be some material to read. I will tell you what materials. I yes, what material you're going to have to read. I don't have it on Blackboard yet, but I have already made it. There's uh, oh yes, the history of hacking. The history of hacking might already be out there. Uh, I think it is. Anyway, the history of hacking. Uh, will be one of the first, uh, you know, assignments that you have to watch with on your own time. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, and there are some others. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. They will be listed on Blackboard what you have to watch. And I'm going to try my very hardest that each week tell you what's coming up. In other words, at the end of this live lecture, I will tell you the one or two or maybe even three uh, uh, pre-recorded lectures I'd like you to watch. And they'll be on Blackboard. And I'm going to be trying to put them out on Blackboard ahead of time if I can. My goal is like be a week or two ahead of time and so you can watch them whenever you want to. Uh, of course, that requires me to put them all together and record them and everything. So... And if you have questions, issues, comments about the uh, pre-recorded material, do send me a note. Let me know. Don't suffer in silence. Uh, let me know how it's going. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any comments? If not, uh, look forward to having a, a useful semester. And I will see you Tuesday, uh, February 2nd at 2 o'clock. So long. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Williams. You take Thank care. You. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Take care. Uh, peace.